Hey, Forkers! I'm doing an interview with Priya Rau. I think I said her last name properly. So hit the subscribe thing, and we'll be right back. Hey, Forkers! So I'm going to try to add some interviews to the channel here. I think it might be interesting. So today I have Priya, who is an actress. She is one of the biggest advocates for Canadian film. She's part of the First Weekend Club community who helps uh, get the word out about Canadian films being released inside of Canada in theaters, but also on demand. So uh, you should support them on Twitter and all the things. I will post those things up somewhere here. So we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about being plant-based. We're also going to talk about what movies and uh, TV shows we're watching while we are stuck in isolation because this is happening during COVID. So stick around. Hey, it's so great to chat with you in Hi. isolation from your farm. In isolation, yeah. We, we, we can't, we have, we're very lucky to have uh, our version of a, a very luxurious cottage out in Kitchener, Ontario. So we've kind of retransplanted here for, for part of our isolation anyway because it's lovely and what else are we doing what else are we doing i do love that you said uh it's kind of like the shining over there. yeah you asked how it was going and i said have you seen the shining i have i've seen all the versions of the shining yeah <laughs> what happened what led you down the plant rate based road well you were saying when you saw me in whistler you didn't recognize me no not at all and that's interesting because that's something that i got a lot in that time period and even like kind of after I had lost, because I shed about 200 pounds. Um, naturally, right? Well, naturally in the sense that it's like I lost it through weight loss and diet, yeah. Um, yeah. It, someone didn't cut off half of me, because that's kind of what I lost. I lost half of my yeah. body weight or more. Um, and I was, and then I also shaved my beard off at that time, and literally people would not recognize me. Even like I, even when I showed my photo ID, it didn't wasn't working. I went to Costco and the lady almost didn't let me buy my shit there because it didn't match anything. So I grew the beard back because it was like that's too much for everyone at once. Uh, yeah, I just, I mean, it. I say plant based. I say I, I don't say I'm a vegan, and it's not because I don't care about animals. I love animals. Uh, it's more because my. Uh, general i also i mean i have an article coming out that's gonna be on my website i made a video called plant-based or vegan that kind of gets into more details about this so you can check that out but i look at it like this uh, a vegan person says that an oreo cookie is totally cool to eat because it's it doesn't hurt animals and there's no animal products inside of it as a, as a whole food plant-based person i go i would never eat an oreo because it's full of processed shit Right. And that's the difference for me. It's like the food I eat is whole food processed, whole food, non-processed food. And that's the difference for me. And mine stems more from uh, my own health stuff and environmental mm -hmm. reasons. That also has to do with animals. It's like me is more, I look at the, the amount of, you know, space and land and resources it takes to create meat production and I just go, that's an inefficient technology. Why are we still using it when we have all these other options, processed or not? You know, if you want to eat like your Beyond Burgers and that kind of stuff. But of course, my, my stuff also has to do with animals and that it's like, you know, animals should not be tortured for our, tortured and, and done inhumane things for our own purposes. Uh, but I, I don't like, I can't say that I go out of my way to make sure every single little product I use has nothing to do with animals. You know, I do my best. I don't, you know, wear leather or anything like that. But I, I, I don't feel good about saying, I can't say 100% that I'm a vegan, but I can definitely say I'm, you know, whole food, plant-based and align probably entirely with vegan principles. Well, I think there are a lot of vegans out there that, um, actually, I, I know some vegans who still drink milk in their Tim Hortons coffee, but they call themselves vegan. So it's a pretty fluctuating term. Oh, I even, know myself, I used, what's that? Even in the plant-based community, there are people like, well, I can be plant-based and still have cheese. It's like, well, I don't know what cheese your, what plant your cheese is growing on, but it's not right. really, you can say you're largely plant-based or mostly, but you can't say you're entirely plant-based if you're still eating dairy. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Unless that cheese is coming from cashews. Yeah. <laughs> in which case, 
It could still be plant based. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was just going to say on the Oreos thing, I remember how excited I was when I read that Oreos were vegan, and then not so excited when I realized how much palm oil they use. But, anyways, that is all an aside. Let's get into the fun stuff, which is what are you doing to occupy your time? I know you've got two kids to entertain. I've got two cats that are kind of like following me everywhere I go. Right? My, my, my kids and my dog are like that. Uh, yeah, so we've holed up here. I'm actually, I mean, I'm kind of uh, taking this time to really just work on a lot of my stuff from my website, my former Fat Forker website. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of articles and videos and that kind of stuff just because we're here, we're holed up uh, anyway. Uh, you know, the industry has kind of stopped dead. So all of my, my projects are kind of like on hold. So I'm taking advantage of that time and getting the kids involved. We're making some fun recipes together and yeah. just taking advantage. And so it's like, I'm spending about, you know, a quarter of my time on that. And then just a quarter of my time being a decent parent or trying to, and, uh, and that kind of stuff I'm doing, you know, my mindfulness stuff. I'm doing yoga. I never thought I'd be a yoga person. My like daughter and I like to do yoga, yoga together. Yeah. Uh, my daughter and I do that together. And then we're watching movies, as you do. Yeah. Let's get to that part. Movies and TV. And I just want to start off with one of my favorite shows that kind of is a riff off your former fat forker, because I love the name of that website. Uh, the Good Place. One of my favorite happy, happy shows. Oh, my shows. God. That was a... So yeah. Well, you've seen the whole thing? All of it. Okay, so spoilers for those who haven't finished the series. Don't that, give spoilers already. Oh, screw. It's like, come on. We can't not talk about it. I, here's the thing. we won't. I won't give away all the mechanics of it because that, in a nutshell, what makes that show amazing to me is that, first of all, I think it's one of those few shows that I would say is a perfect show and that there's no wasted episode. There's no episode where I would go, eh, it was kind of a hallway episode that got you from here to there. What really blew my mind about that show was just how it constantly reinvented itself and had no and and didn't like just feel like it was stretching out and had any filler it was just like that show went on and on and just like just took sharp turns and curves and just took you on a real journey yeah and uh kristen bell star of that show who everybody loves from frozen from the kids who love her in frozen yep. to those of us who've loved her since veronica mars i also love her as a human being her and her husband dax shepherd yeah did you know that they had created a line of um shampoos and such that are affordable zero like zero toxins that are available to everybody across uh well across everywhere yes but it, it was available in walgreens it was all low toxins they just felt that Good products, healthy products for your family, for the environment should not be out of reach for the common person. I didn't know that. So I love, love that. Also, as an aside, watch their video, Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell, of when they were traveling across Africa and they put together a montage of them singing um, Africa. Wait, singing the song by, that, yeah, Africa yeah, yeah. by Total, right? It's a great, it's a great four minutes of your life. And I love that she's always saying, fork! Fork me. So funny. Her, I mean, so and the other person, I mean, everyone on that show is phenomenal. Like the entire cast, even down to like supporting characters. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but the woman who plays Janet is amazing. Oh, amazing. Uh, Ted Danson, like what a fantastic role for him. Totally. You know, especially after they get out of the first season stuff and, and, and his arc starts to shift and change. Like he just... Yeah is like this new delightful version of Ted Danson we've never seen before. Delightful is the perfect word. And that show will, there are six seasons, I think. No, so you four. got lost. Just four. Is, is it only four? It's maybe five. I'm almost entirely sure it only went four seasons. And then they got out. Let me just I'll look it up. Four, yeah, four perfect seasons, however many. Just like you said, they didn't waste any episodes because they didn't have 23 episodes a season. They were very short seasons, but every episode left you wanting more and it's just a show that will make you feel happy and light yeah, and four, four seasons 53 episodes that's it 53 half hours so really you've got about 25 hours 26 hours you can kill that way <laughs> that's a week you can binge that show probably in a week if you let's really do it okay to. what are you what's one of your favorite shows that you would recommend what are we watching right now i'm just going through my wife and i just finished the new season of Maisel. 
uh, the marvelous yeah. Mrs. Mesa, which we continue to love. I keep, I keep a, I have a list. Literally, I keep a record of every single thing that I watch. Which, if you're nerdy and curious, I have it on my my JeremyLalon.com website. Oh my god, that's uh, got a long list. It is a long list. I'm already like literally. I've watched 146 films already this year. Oh, this year. Okay, I thought you meant during <laughs> social isolation. Oh, I'm no, like, no, I no, no, committed. No. No, but uh, but I'm down on TV. I haven't watched as much TV uh, this because I've just been watching a lot of docs and I've been reading a lot of books. I've been better about not watching a ton of television right now. Shameless is one of our favorite shows, right? That we watch uh, constantly. You know, and that's one I haven't started, so that's yeah. a good one for me to start binging. Have not seen it at all. I'll tell you this, and it's on Netflix, so it's easy yeah. to do. Shameless is another perfect show. There isn't, and they're like nine seasons in. That is a show that does not have a wasted episode. Right. It is full of amazing twists and turns and great characters. And it is just a, a, a delight from... We, we haven't caught up on the, on the current newest season, but it's great. We're also... We finally just started catching up on better things. Pamela, okay, that's another one I haven't seen. Pamela Adelon's show. Uh, it just started season four, and so we've caught up on that. Uh, I am uh, a genre nerd, so of course I watch The Walking Dead, despite its its mixed quality. Uh, I, right. I always love the comic books, so I, I hate watch that show. I think, uh, but I, <laughs> but I still do watch it. Um, that one might be a little bit too close to home right now to uh, what humanity could turn into. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's great, and uh, and I'm and I'm up to date on Better Call Saul, which I've always loved. Right. Some great, yeah, great characters in that one for sure. What about Brooklyn Nine Nine? I, you know what? That's one of my black holes. I've never watched Brooklyn Nine Nine. You got to, you got to, Jeremy. It is very similar to The Good Place in that there are no wasted uh, episodes really, and it's gone. I think it's now in seventh season. It is just such a happy, fun, light. Every character is unique. Uh, love him or hate him, and it's just the dynamics between the characters just beautiful. It's a, it's a fun, fun show that just always leaves me smiling nice yeah that's it you can binge there is there any podcast you're listening to you know what i'm not listening to well i just started listening to one and i can't remember what it's called but to try and understand the new episode of westworld <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it, it breaks it's like the dummies version of it it breaks it yeah. down for you nice yeah and i still couldn't get it i had to stop listening to that podcast halfway through because my brain was hurting i'm like i don't remember uh, do I have to watch all of season two again? Nice. Anyways, there's way too much in that show, but I'm, I love that show so much, and I'm so happy that Aaron Paul is on it. Yeah. So good. Uh, I want to also mention one of uh, two of my favorite shows that are Canadian. One of which is Shit's Creek. I haven't started the new season yet, so don't give so, me any spoilers. It's so good. I, yeah, I can't I'm just going to say that I think they're, they are, of course, going to wrap it up as beautifully as the whole show has been. Because you can see as this series, as this a season is developing, it's got all that heart and all that. It's just so beautiful. I'm and the excited. characters are just hilarious, really. And the other one, Baroness Von Sketch, which you directed a ton of. Yeah, I haven't I haven't been with the show for the last season. Uh, but uh, yeah, I worked on seasons one through three. Yeah. There are some sketches on that show that I just feel like are ripped from my personal life. And some that are kind of strangely ripped from what's going on right now. Like, there, there's a darkness uh, to some of those sketches that, that go on about the apocalypse. There's the, the Mad Max we won, the one we did. Okay. There's a you couple... might tag some of those. Yeah, I'll try to find them and tag them. There's a couple that kind of get into, you know, apocalyptic type stuff. Right. So, uh... So unfortunately, it might be a little bit too close to home these days. But then again, why not laugh at the time we're in? I think, I think honestly, what I've been wondering is why more news outlets and radio shows aren't bringing on comics, comedians, to, to, to give their take on things. Because I think that's what we need. We're hearing so much news all the time. Let's hear some comedians give us a good laugh about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about movies? Movies, the doc. I've been. I mean, it's. I. It's funny when I'm working on stuff in the background. I tend to throw on a lot of like food docs. Okay. Uh, what are some of your favorites? I watched a real terrible one the other day. I. I. I can. I only half watched it. Okay. What is it? It was called Fat, a documentary. It's on Amazon Prime. Okay, have not it's, seen it's that. It's a keto one. one. It's about uh, keto, and I'm just like, oh, I can't. I just like, I just can't follow your logic on this I stuff. Know. 
The uh, keto diet, that whole thing is just insane to me how it's such a big fad, um, or not even a fad anymore, but how people are really going in for that when it's just not healthy. It's just insane. I mean, people can look at it and say, well, plant-based is a fad too. I was like, well, there's more science that backs it up. You know, yeah. all my stuff, I, I like to, I look at the, like the people that I follow and look at are all science-based, like Dr. Joe Furman and Dr. Michael Greger and those guys, like they kind of know what the hell they're talking about. They're, yeah. I think anyway, maybe I've just swallowed the pill. But, um, so that one I could only watch half of, I couldn't even continue to hate watch it cause it was just making me angry and I just turned it off. Uh, but, uh, there was a good one oh, that, uh, it's all the people that I like and I'm surprised I hadn't heard of it before. It's on Amazon prime as well. It's called, uh, plant, no diet fiction. Yeah. I've heard of that one. I haven't seen it. It's good, but it's also, I mean, for me it was like, I watched it and I'm like, yeah, I know all this stuff and I know all these people and I've heard all these things. So it was just fun to watch in the background while I was doing other stuff. Uh, it's good for other people that want um, that have seen like the Game Changers and right. got and went, oh my god, what is this world of things? It's a, a good like next deeper level down the rabbit hole. That's more about the science and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's not just about like how you can be fit and cool on on. You know, I think the Game Changers was a nice little little palate cleanser that got a lot of people to go, oh wait a minute, there's another way of thinking. Uh, and then you can kind of go down the the, the rabbit hole of, of stuff like that now. Absolutely. I think that movie was so appropriately made because it really did change the game. And it continues to have such a ripple effect across athletes. And then just because of their celebrity status, it's going to trickle down to a lot of their fans. So good on them. Toronto yeah. producer of that movie. Yeah, Toronto I'm like a, a producer. So super cool. Yeah, I'm in a bunch of like uh, Facebook plant-based groups that uh it was interesting as soon as that thing came out i i swear the numbers on those groups like quadrupled overnight yeah when they, that movie was at hot dogs two maybe three two years ago i got to interview a lot of the cast and they were just amazing it was such a fun interview and i was so excited at that time it took two years for it to come out to theaters but now that it's on um now that it's on netflix and everywhere it's really just exploded yeah. So great, great for the world. Movies, you asked me what I was watching. I, I watched one recently on Netflix that is not a great movie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, but I loved it anyways because Mark Wahlberg is so hilarious in what he does. And it's Spencer Confidential. Oh, I just, that just popped up. I, know, I, I thought I'd say that. I, I bet this is not an amazing movie, but I bet it's fun. Is it fun? It is so not amazing. The story was so confusing. I didn't even bother trying to follow it. But he has an exasperated look that he does. And he makes so much fun of himself in his movies that it's, I just, God love him. I will watch anything he does. And if you haven't seen The Other Guys, you've got to see The, the Other Guys. The Other Guys is great. It's on Netflix too, I think. Yeah, it is. And what about Daddy's Home? Have you seen that? Again, him and Will Ferrell. Farrell, sorry. Uh, I think I tried to watch that and I just couldn't get into it. There is just one scene where, where Marky Mark, I still call him that, is doing push-ups through the whole scene. And Will Ferrell's trying to have a heart-to-heart -to, -heart to him. And at one point he goes, wow, you're, you're still doing push-ups like this whole time. It's just so funny, their dynamic. Yeah. Again, not the fanta a fantastic movie, but I will watch those two in anything. And especially Mark Wahlberg. I'll I'm watch him. I'm a big fan of Mark Wahlberg. He's so fun. Yeah. Uh, some Canadian films that I love. The F Word. One of my favorites. Yep. Yeah. Michael Douse is my favorite Canadian filmmaker by far. He was the guy that when I was going through film school, because I, I, I'm going to be honest, like there's not a lot of Canadian filmmakers that inspired me growing up just because I mm -hmm. found that, you know, that generation of filmmakers were all making pretty morose films that I just didn't connect with. There wasn't the kind of films. I'm a child of the 80s. I grew up, you know, with those kind of movies. And so when Michael, when I saw um, It's All Gone Pete Tong for the first time in FUBAR, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, that's me. That's right. kind of like where I align. And so he was kind of my entry point into going, okay, we don't just make a certain type of film in Canada. We can, there's room for me too. Yeah, we can make things that are funny. Yeah, and we can make things that be, that are more mainstream, for lack of a better word. Yeah, like or just connect emotionally and not just like on a dark, dour level, and have to be like quote unquote serious and feel like homework. Exactly, and that's what we don't need right now. I think even some of your films, just the titles alone, are would make people want to watch them. Sex in a small town. How to have sex in a small town? How to have an orgy in a small town, and then sex after kids. There Sorry. you go. You mash them together. That's okay. 
what if you mash those two stories together? You could try re-edit the two films together. Some of the characters, some of the actors overlap. You you could make That's it happen. True. Doppelgangers. Yeah. But yeah, so how to have an orgy in a small town. How to plan an orgy, yeah. After kids. Like with some Canadian actors that you will absolutely recognize. You'll love seeing them. Um, it's, those two are just such funny films. And your latest one, James versus his future self. Yeah. But that, I know that was about to come out in theaters and all of this happened. So what's the story with that now? Yeah, I mean, that's an ongoing conversation, to be honest. And I can't say too much about it because we don't have the official plan. It was supposed to be released in theaters uh, in like eight or ten Canadian cities on April 3rd. Right. Uh, and that's kind of not happening now. Uh, I guess here's the challenge. I mean, I think there's no secret that it's like Cineplex is being sold or has been sold. Uh, and uh, so we don't even know what's going on with Cineplex in the upcoming yeah. months. You know, there's a whole bunch of studio films that are now being pulled and held. So even when the cinemas reopen, you know, the amount of room that's going to be there for independent Canadian films is going to be limited. Cineplex has said that they will reschedule us at some point, mm -hmm. but they aren't saying that we'll be first up when the when the theaters reopen. So we don't know. So we're exploring different options. We're exploring whether or not we just go whether or not we just go straight to VOD. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, part of the challenge is that we uh, we have a pre-sale to Crave. Uh, we're funded by Telefilm. So part of those agreements are that we have a theatrical release. And right. so we're talking to those organizations to see how they feel about us going right to VOD as well. It's not just as easy as us going, well, let's just throw it up online and see what we do. We have to talk to our, our you know, producing partners and our uh, distribution partners and all that kind of stuff. And it, 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 there's a bunch of chefs in the kitchen that have to make those decisions. So, you know, keep keep an eye on me on social media, at Lalon Jeremy on Twitter. And as soon as I know what's happening, I will whore it out. You know, <laughs> we're also, the cha but the challenge is also this, is that it's like, if you go straight to VOD, you don't necessarily get the press coverage you would normally get from like uh, newspapers and that kind of thing in Canada. And so the question is, will those, uh, outlets support our digital release in the way they would have supported our theatrical release, knowing we were supposed to go theatrical, but we might not just because we don't want to wait for an unforeseen amount of time. Mm -hmm. You know, especially it's a, it's a it's a fun light comedy about being in the present. It's kind of the perfect movie that could come out right now, and I think be great for some people to watch. Like I just love to get it out to as many people as possible right now in this time where I think this is the kind of movie that people would love to see. So, uh, you know, if I had my way, I'd put it out today. So we're just yeah. waiting to talk to, to hear back from our partners and see what decisions I think is best for the film, uh, amid what's going on right now. And yeah. Think, well, keep us posted for sure. So at Jeremy, at Lalon Jeremy, did you say? Yeah, that's my Twitter handle, but it's like, you know, I'm not the only one. It's like Sean Garrity has his new film that was supposed yeah. to come out around right now. Warren Sonoda has his film. Mm -hmm things they do for money, like, we're all kind of talking to each other going, what are you doing? What are we doing? Uh, because even when the theaters reopen, like, I don't know how good I feel about telling people to go to the cinemas. Right. You know? Jordi Sabah, his movie was about to come out uh, tonight, actually. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of us in this, this thing where it's like, you know, it's hard enough to get a theatrical release in Canada these days, given that we don't own any of our cinemas, or many of them. Uh, mm -hmm. And then now there's just going to be this bottleneck of films that are, need to be released. And what's the best play for us in this landscape? Everything's changing. There's going to be a lot of new stuff that comes out of this and things we discover and learn about kind of how to release art in this time. So, uh, you know, I wish I had an answer for you. I don't have it just yet. But we are, we will be communicating with uh, everyone as we figure some stuff out in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, it'll all unfold. We're curious to see how things go. Um, the one last thing I thought would be fun is to go over some videos or, or some movies and shows starring famous vegans. Sure. I don't know. Along the plant based ones. So some of the ones I was thinking of Lit by Alicia, with Alicia Silverstone. Hilarious. Way back in the day. It's a bit of a throwback, but if you haven't seen it from, I think, the early 90s, Coolest? it's a good one to watch. Oh, yeah. And going even further back, Splash with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Is Daryl Hannah plant-based? Yeah. Ah, I did, that's one I didn't know. 
She is. Yeah, I was just looking up, um, trying to look up other celebrities, like widen my net a bit, and I didn't know about her either. But she ha she is a very strict uh, plant based person apparently, and Splash was just such a sweet, beautiful movie. The other Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Did not know he was plant based. Really, oh. I mean, that, I think is a more recent thing, just in the last couple of years. But I'd watch anything he does. Yeah, I knew I knew he was. Yeah. Uh, okay, how about 17 again with Zac Efron, who is plant-based. Yep. And Matthew Perry, who's Canadian, so double whammy. Yep. You got Joaquin, Neighbor. Jokers. Yeah, for sure. Jokers, a Joker. little bit, Maybe a little bit uh, intense for this intense. time. That's okay. But I will. I'm just, I, I mentioned Joker because there's another actor in that movie, Francis Conroy, who is in my new movie, James vs. His Future Self. Oh. So I'm throwing I'm throwing that out there. She's not Canadian or plant based, but she's connected to me, and I am plant based. So I'm gonna I take that. Again. Yeah, I like the six degrees right there. Yeah, we're gonna do the six degrees thing. Exactly. The other Zac Efron movie that I liked was Neighbors, and again, Seth Rogen, Canadian. He's another one of those guys that like he's similar in that Mark Wahlberg category, where it's just like I I love how much he does not take himself seriously, and he's just a ridiculous amount of fun. Are you talking about Seth? Zach. Zach. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, Seth he's too, obviously. Fun. But Yeah. But Zach Efron, yeah, he's such a good looking guy, you think he's kind of maybe this is a horrible thing to say, but that he's not so intelligent. But he does have a very good sense of humor and he's really good at uh, not taking himself too seriously. But also you've you know, he's done great dramatic work. I think that's yeah. a guy that can put him he can do anything. He's great. Absolutely. Woody Harrelson. Always somebody to watch. Defender. Zombieland. What's that? Defender, Canadian film. There you go. That's right. I forgot he was in that. Yes. And then Natalie Portman. Maybe watch a little bit of Thor. The first Thor was just hilarious the to me. The first one. <laughs> yeah. But also, Chris Hemsworth is just so watchable and charismatic. But definitely the first one. The first one blew my mind because I, I went in not expecting to love it. And I just love how much of it's basically a fish out of water comedy. Totally. When he tastes coffee for the first time, I don't know if you remember that scene, but he's in a diner and he tastes the coffee and then he finishes his cup and he throws it down on the ground and he goes, another, like as if he's some king, yeah. which I guess is. That part killed me. And then every time he gets like hit in the head and knocked out because he's not strong anymore, it just killed me. Every time they just used all of his like strengths against him, I yeah. was in for it. And so then, much fun. Yeah, the first and the third Thor movies, phenomenal. The second one, you can kind of skip over. Yeah, or just watch because he's pretty, and we like to see pretty men. Yeah. You know. Sure. <laughs> and then uh, his brother, younger brother, Liam, who is vegan, his Hunger Games series, you know, might not be the best series of movies again, but if you want to see a movie series about good winning over evil. They're fun. I wonder, they're fun. I'm, uh, here's a question for you. I wonder if those, I mean, I show my son stuff that's probably not appropriate for most kids. Uh, but it's like, what do you think is the age range for the Hunger Games movies? Because I wonder if I could show them to, uh, maybe not both my kids, but maybe my son now. How old is your son? He's 11. Oh, I think it's totally appropriate. I don't think there's a lot of gratuitous violence in those movies. Not more than he's already seen in other stuff. Yeah. I mean, he sits down and watches Kurosawa movies with me, so I think he's okay. I think he's fine. Yeah. I think he's fine. Yeah, my friends wa had their uh, daughter watch Jaws when she was eight and a half. Yeah. I think she's fine. Pretty much watching anything now. He's seen Jaws. He's good to go. Yeah, you'll be fine, I think. And then Clerks, Kevin Smith. Yeah. Another. A recent, uh, recent plant-based, just, just a little over a year as him. Well, his daughter was vegan, and that's what inspired him to go once he, after he had his bypass, right? Yeah. Yeah, and he said he's feeling great, as most people do after they make some changes. And, you know, I'm not one of those people who thinks the whole world is going to go plant-based overnight, nor or maybe ever. But as I like to say, if you're not ready to go all the way, let's flirt a little. Yeah. You know, small changes make a big difference for yourself, for the planet, for the animals. There's another Canadian we're missing. I mean, she's not the world's best actress. Okay. Pamela Anderson. Baywatch? There sure. was a... <laughs> Sure, why not? Well, she, she did not the movie. She did a Canadian film not too long ago. Uh, the the guard something garden. Um, Nadia's movie. Um, the Garden People. Oh God, I'm I'm butchering the title. I'm sorry. I don't know. The I didn't know garden? she was in a movie recently. I'm googling it. 
But she is, yeah, she, uh, there was an episode of Friends recently where the guys were watching Baywatch and they were just showing them running in slow motion. So I guess there is, there's lots to love. I got about it right. It's watch. a Canadian movie called The People Garden. Uh, Nadia Litz directed it. Oh, okay. The, so it's, it's totally a thing. You can do, I, I, I actually, I actually haven't seen it. I can't speak for the movie, but, uh, but Pamela Anderson is also Canadian and she's in it. So there's, there's our other connection there. Yeah. And then, um, the other one is she's not Canadian, but Ellen DeGeneres. If you watch just yep. any number of episodes from her talk show, you're guaranteed to have a laugh. And there's so many seasons of that you, you can go back to. Just pick a, pick a star that you love, watch that episode and you'll be laughing out loud. Peter Dinklage. Oh my God. I love, love him. I know I was trying to find some movies of his that I would recommend, Elf. but a lot of his stuff is pretty Elf. Exactly. Yeah. That's the, the station one. I was agent. Station agent. I haven't seen that oh, one. The station agent's great. I got to see that one. Cause I've been meaning it's been on my list and I totally forgot about it, but I was trying to think of comedies that he's done. And the only one I could really, that came to mind was Elf. And I thought, well, maybe people don't want to be watching Christmas movies. I would watch it any time of year. But the scene where he's being called uh, an elf is so good. So, so good. good. Uh, Brad Pitt is in most things. This is true. This is true. Just throw a dart onto your Netflix search engine, and he'll be in something there. Yeah. Yeah. And he's pretty. He's pretty watchable. You know, for many reasons. Yeah. For more Ocean. like for more of like reality television type stuff. Uh, Penn Jillette. Do not know that. Pen, you know who Penn Jillette is, right? No. Penn and Teller? The oh, okay. So yeah, Penn I know Gillette, that. So uh, wrote a book called Presto, where he, he had a similar name to Kevin Smith. He went through, uh, uh, had like a, a heart a heart condition, and his doctor was like, he need to lose 100 pounds. And so he did the, the potato diet, like the two-week thing where you just eat nothing but like starches, okay. and then essentially became plant-based. Off of potatoes. Interesting. Yeah. So you I read, did not know that. So you can read his book. Uh, you can read his book. Um, Presto, it's called. All right, Presto. We'll have to. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. Uh, any last minute recommendations from your side? Oh, uh, in terms of movies. Yeah, movies, TVs, podcasts, whatever you're doing to keep yourself sane. I mean, I'm. I have my own podcast called Black Hole Films, where I sit down with. Uh, other Canadian filmmakers and actors and whatnot, and we watch movies that one of us have never seen, and then talk oh, about that. them right away. So you can check that out. It's on everywhere that you can listen to podcasts, Black Hole Films. Uh, what am okay. I watching? I'm burning through, like, I have an ongoing list of literally hundreds of movies that I want to watch, uh, and uh, and a stack of Criterion Collection movies that I'm, uh, I'm burning through. So... Uh, Last night I watched uh, Holiday, which is an old George Cougar movie. Okay. With, with um, um, that's really going back. Cary Grant and uh, what's her name? Kathleen uh, Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Uh, we watched. Uh, I, I got my watch to finally watch my wife to watch Britney Runs a Marathon, which is on Amazon Prime, which is a phenomenal yeah, that's movie. Fun. And also, yeah. very, it's not like a plant-based story, but it's like about a woman who gets her shit in gear and loses a bunch of weight by just taking okay. better care of herself. Uh, I'm burning through my Bergman box set still, so I just watched Cries and Whispers the other night, which devastates me every time. If you've ever seen that movie, it's, I haven't. Uh, it's a hard watch. It's about a woman dying of cancer, and, oh, her, si wow. and her sisters and her like uh, nursemaid being like just by her side. And it's just it the depiction of it is so great because my I, my mom passed away of cancer when I was sixteen, and just like the way the actor like she like moans in just this ferocity of pain, th that's accurate and real to a frightening degree that mm -hmm. just destroys me when I watch that movie. So that was a fun watch the other night. Wow, wow, way to bring the whole conversation down. And then my kids and I, are, we're going through, uh, we've kind of, we do these family movie nights. And so to stop fighting over it now, what we do is like every so often when we need more selects, we all pick three movies. Mm -hmm. We put them on a, on a piece of paper and put them in a hat and that way, and whoever had the last movie picked gets to pick the next one out of the hat randomly. And so no one can complain over the movie we pick. Right. 
and everyone that's gets very a, fair. And everyone gets a turn. So we so recently we watched uh, the original Treasure Island from 1950, which for a movie that's 70 years old holds up very well. It's on Disney okay. Plus, and we watched uh, The Sandlot before that. Which, okay, which the kids wow. had seen, but they they loved. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of really old classics. And just on that note, this one's not that old, but I would just say if you have never seen the Carol Burnett show, even just to watch the bloopers from that show is the funniest thing ever. She's kind of amazing. She's kind of amazing. And watching them crack up and then making the rest of the cast crack up is really nothing is funnier than that. I, I, I can't think of anything that has been funnier than watching Harvey Corman make everybody else laugh. Well, listen, I hope that you guys are staying sane out there in Kitchener. So Hold far, up so good. Farm. Yeah. Maybe we'll uh, reconnect in a week or so and see how far down you've made it through some of the recommendations and if I've seen any of the ones that you've suggested. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, Jeremy. Thanks, Priya. Take care. Thanks for checking out this interview with myself and Priya. I hope you liked it. I plan on doing more with other people in the near future. So stick around. If you like this, please leave comments. Please do the likes. Do the subscriptions. Do all the things. Thanks, Forkers.